NFT fam, let's see what the news is today. So definitely go on the V Friends page and check out this helpful guide about how to play book games and understanding Token Trove and Immutable X. Um, they have very helpful tutorials and I really liked it. Um, so when you are on Immutable X, you have to convert your ETH to Immutable X ETH, which was interesting. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be playing book games, but I just took a look, you know, I looked around. It seems a little above my head and above my uh, wallet size for the moment. I saw this in different ducks. I don't know anything about them. They've sold out. Um, and as soon as it loads, they're at 0 0.09. I don't know. I haven't seen any duck projects that I can remember. There was one that I traded a long time ago, but um, I just took a peek. And this tweet was talking about how like it's really important to build communities that that last and have a good foundation for your project. I've been thinking a lot about um, strong communities that support the artist, support the project. Like, how do you do that? Um, you know, I'm in Twitter spaces every day and, and I'm thinking like, how do you build a community? And I and people were saying you have to host your own space. People have to get to know you. So. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I think for projects that have like really beautiful art, it's very easy because people like the art, but maybe for other people, it takes like getting to know them and understanding what their vision is. I don't know, but I've been thinking about community a lot because you really can't sell anything without people there to buy it, right? You have to build a community. Um, so Vivi dropped the, um, Marvel Hulk comic today, which I tried to get and I was pressing by it now for like 15 minutes. I only made a video of about five minutes long, but it didn't work. I, I tried to press slower like some people have recommended and it still didn't work. Like I think I missed the initial buy now button, but whatever, I'll post it. You could take a look. Um, so this is another view at the short circuit racetrack microverse of Roboto's. It looks like a cute racing game. I don't know what the benefits are or anything, but at least they have turned their project into a gamified version, which is nice. Um, so that's cute. And um, yesterday I decided to start a AI generative project. So there are AI apps that you can get online and type. you type in words words that you want to spit out a picture. And so after I typed in my words, um, I got these two pictures and I liked them because a lot of times you'll get stuff you don't like. So I liked these two. Um, I liked the rainbow effect of it. And so I was like, you know what, let me just start an AI generative project and just see what happens. So it's, it's free. You could play around with it. You could play around with the words, with the styles, with everything until you feel like you found something that you like. And then just see if there's a market for it. Like I was talking to a girl yesterday that I met in a space and she sells stuff like this and it's, it's generated in an app and people buy it. So I'm like, why not try it? And I think it's beautiful. So, and they give you the copyright. Uh, so why the hell not? So yesterday I felt so proud of myself because I actually did something right. The floor of quarter machine is 0.969. Okay, it's like one, 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 and then one, two, five, one, three, seven. Like, I actually got into a project that mooned. Yay! <laughs> because I was kicking myself that I lost so much ETH. But if I were to sell right now, I, I, could, have <coughs> I could have two ETH, pretty much. As long as people would buy my NFT, I could have two ETH, which is so cool. So I'm actually holding this because... I'm bullish on the project, but it's very tempting for me to sell, but I'm just really excited that I actually made a good move and I'm excited to see how much more hype they can get because this all happened within a couple days. A couple days they sold out, then the floor was like 0.25 and then they skyrocketed to 0.96 and I made an announcement about this that there were only 19 pieces left before a one ETH floor. So that's kind of cool that it finally happened. Um, so I'm one of the finalists for the Alien Scum Fleet um, art purchase contest, which is really cool. Um, so there's these five people. I know Mr. Note. 
Um, Mr. Note has the wife that always yells at him. <laughs> so in order to um, vote, you need to join the Discord um, and make a vote there. So I'm going to do that later on. Um, and then point one ETH of my work hopefully will be purchased, which could be two pieces for point zero five or one for point one. These were the NFTs that I made last night. This one's called paper because the flowers are in <laughs> paper towels and toilet paper. And this one's worried. This one's regret. And this one's attractive because these two flowers are like, oh my God, you're so cute. <laughs> so there's that. I saw this and I wanted to read it. So you remember the SOS tokens and pudgy penguins and blah, blah, blah. So it says, I'm going to talk about the recent rumors about me taking over Pudgy Penguins. I did not want to talk about it first, but with so many DMs, I feel responsible for keeping everything as transparent as possible so people will not make any investment decisions based on rumors. I actually want to see what Pudgy Penguins floor is right now because I know they went from the 50s to the 90s, and then where are they right now? They're back at point one. I mean, pff, point one. One, one Ethereum. Okay. First, I own 242 pudgy penguins, most, mostly bought around the 2 ETH price mark, and one banana penguin at 100 ETH. So around 600 ETH invested in pudgy penguins, never sold a single one. So all information I provide today, you know, I could be biased since I'm holding them. I reached out to the pudgy penguin founder a couple, what the hell did I just do? Uh, a couple months ago, wanting to buy shares in its company, they offered me 4,000 ETH for 20% equity which is 20 which is 20k eth for the company valuation uh-huh i rejected the deal but i did not stop buying these cute jpegs and helping them so let's see how much is 4000 eth curious curious let's say 4000 eth times 4000 price of eth is 16 million dollars for 20% so $16 million times five gives the company a valuation of $80 million. <laughs> um, I helped them reach the Asian market as well as two AMA sessions with Club 71, a 30K member NFT club. I spent my personal ETH to maintain the floor at two ETH for months. Even I know I could buy for cheaper later. I help them connect with Binance, NFT Marketplace, and the list go on. goes on. I also minted 540 little pudgies to support their second drop and agreed to become their official advisor, but only under one condition is that they have to become transparent with the community. Don't use my name to build trust, but rather they start to give any transparency. Yesterday they reached out to me, created a group chat on Discord for founders and me, asking me if I want to buy Pudgy Penguins again. I told them my time is focused on OpenDAO SOS and I'm happy to take Pudgy Penguins on my shoulders as I think it's also what community wanted. Then I learned all ETH has been split. The company they want to sell have zero ETH US dollar in it and even they did two fundraising with NFTs and promise of game development. It's all empty. They might invest some of the royalty back to hire some mods to be honest, I don't know what is their plan. So this company with zero ETH inside carries a debt of two fundraising and boatloads of promises to the community investors. They reduced the price from 4,000 ETH for 20% to 888 ETH for 100%. Okay, so let's see that. So f hold on one second. So we went from 80 million valuation to 888 times let's say four thousand that's three million five hundred they want to walk away with eth they raise and sell the sinking ship for another 888 eth i counter offered that i'm happy to take over the sinking ship but not pay extra i will invest from my pocket on this pfp even reduce the royalty to one to zero for years so right after they finish the second fundraising, they can walk away with all the ETH and I clean up their messes. Tubby replied, we are stupid if we just give it away. I used to be a fan of Tubby. He shows he is hardworking and now I understand it's all good cop, bad cop plays. Cole is the bad cop where Tubby acts as a good cop. I was fooled. Even if you ever mint an NFT where they mentioned 
there might be a token that is called security offering, which is illegal for those un for these unregistered and open to non-accredited investors, especially in the U.S. You can ask any decent lawyer to verify this. Conclusion: I will not. I will not be able to buy some company that raised two rounds of funding illegally, put in their own pockets, and still want to sell an empty shell for millions. Even I do really want to help the pudgy community. They are great and talented people in there. There is a vote of removing Cole from the team, and that is not even going to be much help. Cole is the ref reflection of the lack of trust and transparency between the founders and community of the project. Re removing Cole is like eating a painkiller when you have cancer. The best solution created a DAO. Founder return all ETH raised community vote how much hours they put into this and I'll pay them for the work they deserve to get paid for the part they did and all expenses they spent then elect contributors to keep building the brand community and the, I hope the team can start making changes that put pudgy penguins on the right track as penguins are cute hope my words can push the project forward in a good direction and NFTs in all communities there will be light at the end of the tunnel Given the team saying that this is all fake, I put the first screenshot. I hope I don't need to post more. Um, interesting. So that is some more information about Pudgy Penguins that I did not know. Um, so take that as you will. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there was a space the other day talking about the Pudgy Penguins drama and like the vulnerabilities in the NFT space that have been kind of witnessed after this happened. I think this person is really nice because they made the SOS tokens. Um, that's really awesome that they care about community and they want to take over the project. It's, it's kind of sad that um, it has become maybe, you know, um, a big financial war for everybody. And you know the the community is affected but at least they're back at a one eth floor um i'm not sure what prices people were in or what it was before the whole thing happened but it's very interesting to kind of watch what happens and i hope that the investors are you know feeling okay and not going through any stress or anything like that um some people in the Web3 space are very romantic about the NFTs, as if the founders were selfless free workers for the good community, etc. The reality is NFTs are businesses, and everyone from founders to holders is acting in self-interest, joining forces around causes they like. Um, yeah, I think a lot of times people, um, like Gary Vee says there, was just like, you know, everyone talks about community, community, but they're actually like worried about their own bags. Um, I think the term community is like who are the people that are interested in your project and keeping them in mind but I think people that are investing in the project they obviously want to make more and then the creators of the project they want to make money but it would be but I think there are moments like you know the the giant party that Board Ape Yacht Club had where people can come together and get to know each other or side projects where people in the same NFT community come together and they build a project of their own or something like that. There is an aspect to community, but at the end of the day, I think we're here collecting JPEGs, trying to flip them, trying to create businesses. I, I do believe that. Um, I invest in people, not projects. I'll invest in anything 999 touches. This guy is so transparent, smart, and highly intelligent and has more integrity than most people in crypto combined. Um, so I do like the transparency and I do like how much they've given back to the NFT community with the SOS token. So that was really nice. And I mean, you know, that was pretty cool. So <laughs> they get my vote. Um, thanks for the thread and what you're doing for the space. I think I'm in a thread actually. Oops. Yeah. So I need to get out of this thread so I could continue um, with my news. So yesterday I learned a lesson Whenever you buy a couch, bend down and tap the legs and never buy a couch with plastic legs because when you sit on it, it's going to break. So literally, um, someone was sitting on the couch. I sat down next to it and boop, the couch broke. So it was very funny at the time and then not funny. So just a life lesson that 
you don't realize until you act until it happens to you so i want to spread as much awareness as i can about plastic couch legs which i think are as fucking idiotic as the person who decided that it was a good idea to start painting bathtubs in order to cover up rust so those two fucking idiots can go fuck themselves because they're fucking stupid <laughs> anyway <laughs> um this is more about book games um oh i see gary v shilling subducts and and coinbase nft confirms subducts for their marketplace i didn't know that so i guess subducks is going to be on coinbase um so they said they're adding a subduck and they're going to be sweeping 20 to 30 of the king frogs and then one of the replies that gary said was that he likes it he said i love these frogs so if the frogs are going to be on coinbase um maybe there's going to be some movement there i was looking at that's the indifferent duck oh remember i said i wasn't sure about which ducks there were so sup ducks is probably the original duck project this one and then so this is Subducks, and then there's King Frogs, which Gary was saying he likes. Is it one word? Yeah, King Frogs. This is the one that's only at 0 .08, so this is still affordable, I think, uh, as a price, you know, that I could potentially get into, but I don't have enough right now, but if I did, I would. Um, this was a reminder from Gary V that roadmaps don't always equal success. Roadmaps are pitch decks. 90%, 99% of the pitch decks I saw from 2005 to 2015 from startups failed. Be thoughtful, pay attention to the operators and patients. Um, so that's true. I've seen a lot of NFT projects that are all now copying the same roadmap. It's always the same. The tokens that are worthless, the game that's coming out, who knows when, you know, the breeding that's just creating more useless NFTs. Like I see it over and over and over again. And a lot of these projects sell out and I'm just like, what the fuck is everybody doing? <laughs> like, what are they, what are they buying? Like I get if somebody buys a cute art, but when you look at, does the project actually have potential to last in the future or have a lasting utility? I think a lot of these don't. I think it's just a bullshit kind of dream that people are talking about. Like, oh, we're going to get tokens and we've got a game. And it's like, wait, there's now millions of games coming out. How am I going to play all these games? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I don't want worthless tokens. Um... I saw this, someone just swept the Pukenza floor and bought 42. I've seen Pukenza a lot. Puken, Pukenza. Okay. Oh wait, I spelled it wrong. Pukenza. Is it this? So this, I think this was before Wavelength came out. Um, I think. I'm not sure, but I think. Um, it was inspired by Fidenza, Tyler Hobb. Why is that familiar? Is Tyler Hobb the guy that created Calvin and Hobbes or whatever it is in the newspaper? That um, I know Fidenza. Fidenza, Tyler Hobbs. Who is Tyler Hobbs? I don't know. Is it the person that created Art Blocks? I don't know, but the floor on Fidenza is insane. 60, 70, there were only a thousand of these, so it makes sense. This one's cute. I like that one. Yeah, these are kind of that like abstract art look. So there's Fidenza, Pukenza, and, and Wavelength. So Pukenza's at a 0.34 floor. And then let's look at Wavelength. The last time I looked at them, they were above an ETH, 1.2. These are very pretty as well. Love it. So that happened. Um, doodles just had a huge sale for 200 ETH. Let's see where the Doodles floor is at. Doodles. They were at 10 yesterday or, or, or 9, 9.8. So they have dropped about 1.6 ETH. Um, so I wonder, does that mean that the market is shifting? You know, like, have we reached a high and we're coming back down? I'm not sure. 
Um, yesterday, apparently, it was Women in Crypto Day. I only found out in the afternoon, so I was trying to bring some awareness to my project. I spoke to hundreds of people yesterday in spaces, letting them know that I still have not had a female buyer. And after talking to hundreds of people, like being in rooms of 300 and 200 and this and that, still no female buyers. One person said that it might be because women don't have enough money, right? We don't have enough money to invest in other projects. I've definitely invested in other female projects. I wonder what, I would love to have a data scientist come on board and be like, let's figure out what all the women in the NFT space are buying and have bought, right? And if they had awareness of like what they were supporting, would they make a different change or how? what's the average ETH size wallet of a woman, right? These are all very interesting ideas. Another thing that I learned is that Alpha Girl Club, they had a, they had an AMA yesterday, Alpha Girl Club. So when I got on as a speaker, I said, is this run by, is this a female created project? And it's not, it's, it's created by two men, but they do have a, a female team around them. Um, because my question was like, uh, I think one of them was, is it a female created team? And then what is the statistic of how many women have purchased their, their project? So any type of woman project, I'm curious, what is the percentage of women actually buying the project? I know there's more women in, in World of Women, but for other ones that I've seen, I wonder how much it is. And then is there a budget to support other female led projects, right? That was kind of my think the thing that I was trying to figure out yesterday. So, so I got my answer for that, but they don't know, they don't know um, the statistics of women in there who are holding. And it's a hard thing to know because it's everybody's freaking anonymous, right? Unless you like, dox yourself and you're like this is my wallet and this is what I'm buying nobody else really knows what's going on but it's an interesting kind of concept to think about um, I do not believe that the women in the space have no money um, for me I've narrowed it down to either my project is not attractive enough to women at the moment for whatever reason right that's the personal view or the other one is that I've seen a lot of women creators so maybe women create maybe the women in the nft space are majority creators because they don't have the funds to purchase other projects and if they do right i wonder what they are purchasing but honestly it doesn't matter who purchases my art it's just art but it is an interesting statistic that i've brought awareness to and think about and you know encourage other people to think about um, so this is coming out on VV for January 8th on the app, uh, Mermicorns. So it's a mermaid unicorn. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to get them just because you never know if you could get a secret rare and flip it. So I'm definitely going to be trying to get that in two days. It's been nice that VV has had something every single two days for, you know, to try to get the comics are very difficult for me to get. So I don't even know, you know, I just can't get one. Um, also, I wrote this yesterday. I've seen enormous success for NFT projects when two or more communities come together to support each other. So you've seen plenty of, you know, things in my videos referencing like alien friends and crypto Mori's coming together. I've seen alien friends or maybe I've, I've seen lemon friends also maybe linking with these two projects. So anytime two huge communities, oh, uh, Bordy Pia Club rallying with crypto mores that was helpful so anytime you see two big communities come together i think that's a really successful um idea you know of just kind of like we're going to support each other and you already have over twenty thousand people at that point um so this is so as i'm saying that crypto bats which is the ozzy osborne project that's about to come out um, they are saying that if you hold a crypto bat and alien friend in the same wallet, you will be able to bite to create an alien friend style mutant bat. So if you want your bat to look like an alien friend, they're going to have that combo available. So that's another idea of how to create these two projects linking up and supporting each other. Um, this was a video that I saw on Instagram about Fly Fish Club from Gary V. If you want to check it out, it talks more about the restaurant. Um, Logan Paul had a World of Women 
this style of dress is the rarest one I remember from the world of women kind of like discussion that I stepped into. And so that was sold for 765,000. Um, I would be curious how much of that he's reinvesting in women projects, right? Um, and so it was purchased by the Sandbox game. Um, so 535K profit. So you see the difference between how much was spent. So he spent 200,000 and he made 535 is pretty much. So he made over double. Um, so that's amazing. Um, and here we go. This is what I was talking about. Speaking to hundreds of people recently about why I haven't had any female buyers within almost a year, but have seen many female creators makes me wonder if women have the funds to support other women. So remember to support female led projects to spread the wealth. That was just kind of an idea that I had that I already talked about. I saw this as well. Claylings partnering up with alien friends. So this looks very cute. I have a clayling, so it would be amazing if alien friends could link together with claylings so I can make some money on that project. I would love that. Um, but I will see what happens. I still think it's cute and it's the first clay project that I've seen. The winner was announced for Wanderland, so that uh, giveaway was done. Um, what else? Doodles were almost at 10. And I think that's it for now. So if you like this, leave a comment, like it, subscribe. And if you want to take a look at my project, it's called The Evolution of Flowers. We have 322, oh, 326 NFTs. And I'm a one-woman show. So any of your support is appreciated. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.